morning, church. How we doing? Come on, let's all stand together, family. You ready to give him some praise today? Amen. Miracles when you move, such an easy thing for you to do. Your hand is moving right now. You are still showing up at the tomb of every Lazarus. Your voice is calling me out. Right
You never will. Come on, say it. You never will. Declare it. You never will. 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 a shout of praise. Woo, we thank you, Lord. You will never lose. You never have and you never will. Amen. There is love that came for us Humble to a sin you broke my shame and sinfulness. You rose again, victorious. Hallelujah. Faithfulness, faithfulness, none can deny through the storms and through the there is truth that sets me free, Jesus Christ, who lives in me. Come on, you are stronger. You are stronger. You are stronger. Come on, 
on, give him another thanks offering. Woo! Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. You are Lord of all, and you are stronger than anything we are facing or yet to face. We trust you, Lord God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. We thank you. Come on, give him some praise. Raise your voice and praise to him.
Somebody shout glory! glory. Yes. Yeah. King of glory! Oh, the King of glory is here! He is here! He is here! Ah, thank you for your presence. Thank you for your presence, Lord. Amen. Amen. Well, let's make our Psalm 91 decree this morning. This is so important for us. Ready? He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, you are my refuge and my fortress, my God, in you I will trust. Surely you shall deliver me from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. You shall cover me with your feathers, and under your wings I shall take refuge. Your truth shall be my shield and buckler. I will not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day, nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. A thousand may fall at our side, 10,000 at our right hand, but it will not come near us. Only with our eyes we see the wicked. Because I have made the Lord who is my refuge even the most high, my dwelling place, no evil shall befall me, nor shall any plague come near my dwelling. For you shall give your angels charge over me to keep me in all my ways. Into your hands they shall bear me up, lest I dash my foot against the stone. I shall tread upon the lion and the cobra, the young lion and the serpent I shall trample underfoot because I've set my love upon you. Therefore, you will deliver me. You will set me on high because I've known your name. I shall call upon you and you will answer me. You will be with me in trouble. You will deliver me and honor me with long life. You will satisfy me and show me your salvation. Come on, give the Lord a shout. <laughs> Hallelujah. Lord, we curse this coronavirus, this Delta variant. We command it to dry up and die. You will not linger. You will not live. There will not be a resurge in another wave. We speak death, death, death to the very roots of this coronavirus. We cut the head off of this python spirit trying to strangle the breath, the life out of people in Jesus' name. And we thank you that the blood of Jesus covers our homes, our families, our children, our grandchildren, our schools, our places of work, and even this house. Satan, the blood, the blood of Jesus Christ is against you in Jesus Christ's name. And everybody shout it. Amen. Amen. All right. You may be seated here in the house. We welcome all of you that are watching us online. Thank you for joining us. I'm Pastor Gary Mitrick. This is our Sunday morning service. Uh, we want to let, remind everybody that today is the 
first day of our fast, so our fast is completed, it's fulfilled today. And Lord, amen. What a, what a, it was, it was, it was, it was rich, it was strong. Lord, we now claim every promise of a fast in our lives. And we claim that promise, Lord, that our health will spring forth speedily, quickly, supernaturally, and miraculously. In Jesus' name, amen. We got, we got such an exciting, exciting week because tomorrow begins the week of the Feast of Tabernacles. This is such a holy, wonderful time of the year. And I tell you, God wants to come and tabernacle with us. How many believe he's coming back soon? Amen. Our bridegroom is coming to tabernacle with his bride. Amen. And we've got some exciting events coming up. Let me just say, first of all, next Sunday, you don't want to miss next Sunday because we are not only going to be celebrating tabernacles here in the service, but if you saw out in the front, we have some wonderful folks that have built the Sukkot booth outside in the front circle. So after the service is over, we are all going to go outside. We're going to have a time of worship of celebration. Remember, this is not an Old Testament feast. This is not a Jewish feast. The Lord says in Leviticus 23, 2, these are my feasts. And he says, I want you to celebrate. So we want to celebrate the Lord and the Feast of Tabernacles because it is, it is really a reminder of the millennial return of the Christ where he's going to come back on the earth set up his home in the city of Jerusalem. Satan is going to be bound for a thousand years, and Jesus is going to rule and reign on the earth as he comes to tabernacle with us. What an exciting time that's going to be. But what we're going to do is we're going to all go outside, and we're going to have, after we do our celebration out there, we are, we're we're going to have two food trucks. We're going to have a Philly cheese steak and fries food truck. And then we're going to have a Mexican, a taco, uh, and a, a salsa and food truck. And the food will be complimentary. We will provide the food. We'll provide the drinks. And we're just going to put some tables outside, and we're just going to just have a nice, wonderful family time to celebrate tabernacles. So I hope you will join us and plan on being with us. There's a flyer, if you should have got it on the way in, that will tell you all about that. And then, of course, this Friday, somebody shout, this Friday, this Friday. we are doing a night of worship right here in the house. It's called Arise. It's at 7 o'clock, and it is also to celebrate that Feast of Tabernacles. So please plan on joining us for that. It's just going to be a, a, a night of worship and praise, and just to do exactly what the Lord has called us to do, celebrate Him. And then I shared with you that on Saturday, October the 9th, there are... Ten churches in our area that we are all coming together. And we are going to be up at the Monroeville Park in the amphitheater up there from 3 o'clock until 6 o'clock. And we're just going to come together in unity. How many believe when we dwell together in unity, God commands a blessing? Amen. So there's ten churches right now in this area that are going to come together. We're going to bring our worship teams together. We're all going to come together as intercessors. We're going to just going to pray and praise and worship. I believe it's going to be a powerful time. It's called the Fall Freedom Fest. 
There will be something for children. There will be all kind of wonderful activities there. But it will be at the Tall Trees Amphitheater right here in Monroeville. That was where Sean Foyt was when he came on the 4th of July. So mark your calendar for that. So we've got three exciting events. This Friday is a rise. Next Sunday, we're celebrating the Feast of Tabernacles outside. And then October 9th is the Fall Freedom Fest. All right? Uh, let's, let's, we're going to receive our morning tithes and offering. Can we put our hands together? Come on. Now, I shared with all of you about a month ago, remember we had a major, major, major water leak, and we, we, got, we got a call from the Monroeville Water Company. They said, you've used 500,000 gallons of water in one week. And so, thank God, we got the, the, we found the leak, we got it dug up, we got the pipes, it was a big, huge pipe, got it fixed and repaired, but then we got a $10,000 water bill. And so we were asking you to pray that we could have favor with Elkison, with the water company. And I want to give a, 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 a shout out to LaTonya Brown right here in our church. You know, everybody knows somebody that knows somebody that knows somebody that knows somebody. And praise God, the Lord used her and they waved the water bill. Come on. Come on, somebody. The, that's the testimony of a tither. Come on. When you're a tither, come on, I'm talking to tithers now. When you're a tither, he said, I will rebuke the thief, the devourer for your sakes. Hallelujah. Woo. So we're going to receive our morning tithes and offerings. We're going to pray. If you're here in the house, of course, you know to make your checks payable to greater works. If you prefer or like to do your giving by credit or debit card, the resource center in the corner of the lobby will be open. You could do your giving that way. For those of you that are watching us on the lower third of the screen, there's a number of ways that you can give. We're going to encourage you to check it out. Please be faithful and thank you for your faithfulness with your tithing, your offering. It's still summertime. It's going to be fall in just a couple of days, but we're believing for a summer jump and not a summer slump. So, Lord, we thank you for blessing the tithes, the offerings, the gifts of your people. God, in, you are encouraging us that we cannot outgive you. You said when we give, it shall be given back to us. Good measure pressed down, shaken together, running over. You will cause other men and women to bless us and to give into our bosoms. So Lord, thank you for meeting every need of this house. We call the budget for this month of September, not just met, but exceeded. And we call every need in our personal lives and houses met as well according to your riches in glory by Christ Jesus. And everyone said amen. All right, the ushers will serve us here. If you are watching us, thank you for preparing your offering there as we continue to worship the Lord. Who am I that the highest king would wear? But he brought me
Please remember, in conjunction with our night of worship this Friday, we are collecting non-perishable food items as well as personal items. We want to bless some folks that uh, have a need, and we hope that you will bring those in if you come to the Tuesday Bible study or Wednesday at the well or, of course, Friday night for the night of worship arise. Bring something with you. There's a table out in the lobby, and I'm sure it will be a blessing to many. Let's all stand together in the house and uh, lay your hand on your tithe if you're tithing on your offering. God promises to bless everything you put your hand to. And I bless you with the blessing of the Lord that makes rich. And God, you add no sorrow to your blessing in our lives. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. All right, let's celebrate. We're going to ask you to hold on to your offering here in the house until you leave and go out at the end of the service. You can put it in the basket safely and conveniently. going to remain standing for our corporate prayer time. Remember at the conclusion of the service, the message, there will be altar workers down here in the front. If you need prayer for yourself, make your way down. If there's an empty chair, just sit in it. If there's not, wait until you're asked to come. And if you need healing, they will anoint you with oil. How many believe there's a healer in the house today? Come on, Jehovah Rapha. Jehovah Rapha is in the house. There is somebody that you have been battling vertigo. And right now, I just hear the Lord say he's healing those vertigo symptoms, breaking them off of you right now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Be healed. Jehovah Rapha, arise. Arise with healing in your wings. So if you need prayer for yourself or anyone that's on your heart, make your way down. And uh, we're going to just, in this atmosphere, wonderful atmosphere here today, of an open heavens, we're going to lift up the concerns, the needs, the people that are on our hearts. We want to keep Kathy Lang and her husband in our prayers. Their son uh, went home to be with the Lord last evening. And we're praying for Kathy and her family. Uh, Glenda Jordan. She's been in the hospital, but she texted me on Friday that she got released to go home. We're grateful for that. Anthony Zachleen, he's in the hospital. He needs a healing touch. We're sending the word to him and to his wife as well, Mary Lynn. Uh, Carol Motter, she needs prayer for healing. And uh, we're praying uh, with David and Terry Hanley for their nephew, Aiden. He uh, has a very low blood count. How many believe God could give him a Holy Ghost blood transfusion? Come on. Come on. Lord, you can do it. You can do it. You can do it. And David, your mom?
Okay. Is she home? She's yeah. okay. All right. We're going to send a word to her. Amen. Amen. We've all got someone on our hearts. Let's just go to the Lord. Father, we do. We come boldly because you told us to. We come with a Christ confidence. For you said if we ask anything according to your will, we know you hear us. And we know that if you hear us, we know that we have those things that we have desired and asked of you. So Lord, we bring every need here in the house. Those that are watching us, the people that are on our hearts, we lift all of those situations up to you now. We pray for Kathy Lang and her husband, Lord, and family. Wrap your loving arms of comfort round about them right now, Jesus. Minister your peace to them. Comfort them as only you can. Lord, we send the word to Anthony in the hospital. We send the word, Lord, to Aiden, that you, O oh Lord, would elevate those blood levels, Lord, for him. In Jesus' name, give him a miracle. Lord, we pray for Glenda, that you would touch her. Heal people, Lord, in their lungs. Remove inflammation. Heal bronchitis. Heal those, oh God, that are battling pneumonia, cold symptoms, sickness and disease. Lord, we curse cancer. You are greater than cancer, Lord. We send the word to David's mom, Cassandra, at home. Come upon her, Lord. And Lord, even as she gets a second opinion, Lord, you're her great physician. You could touch her and heal her all by yourself, Lord. So we send the word according to Psalm 107 and verse 20. And Lord, anyone else that's on our hearts, we cover our children and our grandchildren while they're in school. Keep them healthy. Give them the mind of Christ, the wisdom of God. Let that spirit of excellence that rested upon Daniel rest upon them. We pray for your grandson, Daniel. In Jesus' name, Lord, touch him, deliver him, and heal him. Father, we lift every weight off of us now and fill us with shalom, shalom, your perfect peace. Lord, we continue to pray for peace in Israel and in the Middle East. For you told us to pray for peace in Jerusalem and Israel. We pray for the Americans that are still stranded in Afghanistan. We pray, oh God, you would blind the eyes of the Taliban. That they would not be able to find the, the believers, the Americans, the women, the children, the, the, the innocent Afghani people that have helped us, Lord. Oh God, we pray, protect your church. We pray for our military around the world that are serving us. That you keep them safe as well. Lord, we roll every care off of our shoulders and onto yours. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, thank you for honoring the fast. Thank you, Lord. You said there are certain strongholds that are only broken by prayer and by fasting. And Lord, we, we shatter every stronghold in our lives. Touch every person here in this house, everyone that is watching us. Fight our battles, Lord, for us, because it's not by might and it's not by power, but it is by the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of the Lord in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. amen. Come on, give the Lord thanks for hearing and answering our prayers. Amen. He's a good, good father.
You may be seated, everyone. Thank you so very much. I want to just give everybody a, a heads up that this Friday, September 24th, Pastor Gerard is having another birthday. Amen. Now, he, he just had one last year, but he's having another one this year. So we bless him, amen, with health and healing. Lord, we thank you for healing his knees, touching his joints, blessing him, Lord, with long life and health. He's been a, such a blessing to all of us. Lord, now bless him. Surprise him for his birthday. Lord, give him a gift that man can't give him. We pray and we celebrate him in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Well, let's go to the word. Romans 8, verse 14. We've been in battle mode for about the last five weeks, and it's been so good. We took the last three Tuesday night Bible studies, of course, and we were doing intercessory prayer, making war in the heavenlies. I thought it was such a fruitful time. I appreciate all of you that came out. We're going we're gonna to get back to the, the Bible study this Tuesday, but I hope you'll continue to come. The Bible says so much the more as we see the day approaching that we should not forsake the assembling of ourselves together. But I want to talk to you today about being spirit-led. If there was ever a day that we need to be spirit-led, I believe it's now. In Romans 8, starting in verse 14, it says, For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons, the sons and daughters of God. If you are led by the Spirit, for you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear. I mean, oh, God hasn't given us a spirit of fear. I said, God hasn't given us a spirit of fear. But power, love, and a sound mind. Thank God for a disciplined, sound mind. But you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba. Abba means daddy, papa, daddy, God, father. The spirit himself. Remember, the spirit is not an it. He's a person. He's the third person of the Godhead that's on the earth today. I just saw a statistic this morning that said the majority of adult Christians do not believe in the Holy Spirit. How sad. I thank God. He, the Holy Spirit is my best friend. Amen. I love the Holy Spirit. I love teaching about the Holy Spirit. I love talking about the Holy Spirit. And I, and I think a lot of people are afraid of him because they're afraid that if they yield to him, he's going to make them do something crazy. Well, he might. He might. He might. But thank God for the Holy Ghost, right? Come on, how many of you love the... Come on, just welcome the Holy Spirit right now. Holy Spirit. The Spirit Himself bears witness with our spirits that we are children of God. And if we're children, then we are heirs. Heirs of God, and we are joint heirs with Christ. If indeed we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. Come on, we, we, we've, we've gone through the suffering, so let, let's, let's, let's enter into the glory, right? If we suffer, then we're going to glory with him. So, I want to just talk about, you know, Paul talks a lot about the battle that goes on between the flesh and the spirit inside of us. He, he even makes a statement. He says, he says, sometimes the things I want to do 
Those are the things I, I can't do and don't do. And the things I don't want to do, why is it sometimes those are the things I do? He said, who shall deliver me from this wicked man that I am? And then he answers, oh, thank God for Christ Jesus. Jesus is our deliverer. Hallelujah. But my first point is simply this. I'm just going to say it. I'm done chasing feelings. I'm done allowing the feelings, the emotions, the fleshly, carnal part of my life control me. Look, we all have feelings. All of our feelings are rooted in the flesh. They are a part of that sin nature. And in Romans 6 and verse 13, the Apostle Paul says, Do not present your members, or let's say your emotions, as instruments of unrighteousness to sin but present yourselves, present your emotions, your feelings to God as being alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness to God. You see, we have a choice. We can either live by our feelings and our emotions, or we can be led by the Spirit. Lord, help us to be led by the Holy Spirit. And what I've learned is, whatever I feed the most, that's what becomes the stronger and the fatter. If I feed my flesh, my feelings and emotions are stronger. But if I feed my spirit man, then my spirit man is going to be stronger. And that's why, thank God, we, we, we sit under the word because faith comes by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. In Galatians 2 and verse 20, I love this verse. Galatians 2.20 says, Paul says, I have been crucified with Christ. And it is no longer I who live, but it is now Christ who lives in me. Say with me, it's no longer I who live, but it's Christ. See, you have Christ now living inside of you. And the life which I now live in the flesh or in my body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and who gave himself for me. And then he goes on in the next verse and he says, and don't frustrate the grace of God. See, if you and I live by our works, if you and I say, well, I, 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 don't, I'm not, I'm not, I don't have to be dependent on the Lord. I can do this myself. I can handle this myself. I, I, can, I can work this out in my own ability and strength. You know what? You're frustrating God's grace. Because grace says, Lord, I need you. Grace says, Lord, please, I, I, I die to that old sin nature. I die. We all have feelings, but we can't let feelings have us. We can't let them control us. We can't feed those negative emotions in our lives. Feelings are like waves in an ocean. You can't stop them from coming, but you can decide which ones to surf. They're going to come. You ever been in the ocean and you're just kind of waiting for the right one? You just kind of ride it in. 
and get right on top of it. And that's what we got to do with our emotions. We got to get on top of them and ride them with the help and the grace of God. I think of King Saul in the Old Testament. He was led by his emotions. Remember, he got so jealous of David. The people were singing, you know, Saul's, he's, he's killed thousands, but David's committed ten thousands. And, and Saul, he, he, he got javelins, and he, he, he was trying to kill David. And you know what? King Saul allowed his emotions to overrule him, and it cost him the kingdom. Think about it. It was costly. It cost him the kingdom. Then I think of Peter in the New Testament. You know, Jesus is ready to go to the cross, and Peter stands there and says, Lord, I'll never let you go to the cross. And Jesus looks at him and says, get behind me, Satan. Because he allowed his flesh, his emotions his feelings to control him rather than being led by the Spirit. And you know what that led to? That led to him denying the Lord three different times. How sad. All that tells me is that the feelings, the emotions, whether it's anger, whether it's jealousy, whether it's insecurity, whether it's fear, whatever emotion that is negative, when it gets out of control, it can be very damaging to your life and your spiritual walk with the Lord. We can either be spiritually led or emotionally driven. Remember the example I used? I was in the Holy Land, and up on a high, high, far hill was a flock of animals. You couldn't tell what they were. And our bus driver, he said, he, our, our guide said, stop the bus. And he said, look up there. He said, you know how you could tell if those are sheep or if those are goats? He said, the shepherd of sheep is always in front of the sheep leading them. The shepherd of goats is always behind the goats driving them. And when you and I feel driven, that's not good. When you and I feel driven, that's not God. When you and I feel like there are emotions that are driving us, controlling our conversation, controlling our thoughts, controlling our feelings, we've got to recognize them and do something about them because we are not ignorant of Satan's devices. How many of you ever said something and after you said it, you regretted it? How many of you ever acted out, and once you did it, it was too late? I, 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 I'm, I'm not, I'm done change, chasing my feelings. I'm, I'm not going to let those feelings control me. Thank God, greater is he that's in me. Greater is he that's in you. Feed your spirit, man. My second point. A verse we know very well is this. Number two, I walk by faith. Come on, finish it for me. And not by sight. Come on, say it with me. I walk by faith and not by sight. If we live by the things that we see, <laughs> where we, we will be disappointed again and again and again. And our emotions you know what? They'll be on a roller coaster. And I made a decision a long time ago at Kennywood. I don't do roller coasters. Mm -mm. I don't do roller coasters. Because you know what? If they go up, they come down. In 2 Corinthians 4, 17, one of my favorite verses. You know I got about 300 of them, but this is one of my favorite. It says, 
for our light affliction, which is but for a moment. I like this. It's working for us. See, even the things in our life we don't like, we don't understand, even the opposition, the adversity, the tribulation, the negativity, you know what? It's really on your payroll. Do you know that? It's working for us. A far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. You know why? Because God gave us a promise and we know that all things, there all things are good, but all things are working together for the good. I'm not talking to anybody that loves God and that are the called according to his purpose. And then he says this in verse 18, while we do not look at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen, guess what? They're only temporary. But the things which are not seen, hallelujah, that's what's eternal. That's what's lasting. That's what's of God. There's a lot of junk and stuff and mountains and feelings and things going on in our lives right now. And the enemy's using it to torment us, to discourage us, to disappoint us. But guess what? It's only temporary. This too is going to pass because the devil is a liar and Jesus Christ is Lord of all. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You and I have to do what Abraham, who is the father of our faith, taught us. In Romans 4, 17, he says, As it is written, I have made you a father of many nations. Remember, his name used to be Abram. A-B-R-A-M. God said, I'm changing your name to Abraham. The word ha means father of. So in other words, every time they called his name, they were prophesying to him. They were saying, father of many nations, father of many nations. Meanwhile, him and his wife are childless. They, they didn't have one child. And, and, and God gave him a name, you're the father of many nations. But see, that's the father of our faith. And he says, in the presence of him who he believed, God who gives life to the dead, and here's the key right here, and he calls those things that be not or that don't even exist as though they already did and were. So sometimes you got to look at the things that you see you got to look at a child that's rebellious and say, you are blessed. You are fulfilling your destiny. I bind your feet to the path of God's will for your life. you got to look at a sick body and say, by the stripes of Jesus, the Christ of Nazareth, you were and you are the healed. Sometimes you got to lay hands on a checkbook that's only got a few dollars in it, and you say, God, it is your will that I prosper and be in health even as my soul prospers. You got to call those things that be not as though they already were and are. Hallelujah! Because we walk by faith. Faith is the substance of things that we hope for, but it's evidence of things that are not seen. And then third and finally, and I shared this earlier with you, whoever is the stronger part of you, your spirit, your soul, which is your mind, your will and emotions, or your flesh, your body, that's what's really going to control you in the end. 
So my third point is this. I am filled with the Spirit. Would you say that with me? I am filled with the Spirit. See, when you and I are filled with the Spirit, our spirit will be stronger than our flesh. And it will be easier then to be led by the Holy Spirit. Now you've got to remember, it's one thing to receive the Holy Spirit. We all get the Holy Spirit at salvation. Then you get the baptism in the Holy Spirit. But it's one thing to get the Holy Spirit. It's another thing to be filled with the Holy Spirit. In Ephesians 3 and verse 16, this is actually a wonderful prayer. I encourage you, pray this prayer that Paul prayed. In Ephesians 3, 16, he says that he would grant to you according to the riches of his glory, that you would be strengthened with might through his spirit, where? In the inner man. Somebody say, in my inner man. That's where you want to be strengthened, in the inner man. A lot of people exercise, lift weights, they build up the outer man. There's nothing wrong with that. But you know what's more important? To strengthen and build up the inner man. And then he says in verse 17, that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith and that you being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the width and the length and the depth and the height. And I love this. And to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge and here's the key and that you may be filled with all the fullness of of God. Lord, fill us with all the fullness of God. What most Christians don't realize is that when we become saved and born again, there is a rich emotional presence that is deposited and enters our life. We must learn to cooperate with His presence on a daily basis. That's why one of the greatest things you and I could do is stay yielded, surrendered to the Holy Spirit. You know, there is so much division in the world today, and even in the church, and division dilutes discernment. Division diffuses your discernment. When you get in the flesh, the lust of the flesh, the pride of life, the lust of the eyes, you know what? You're going to have a hard time being led by the Holy Spirit. You and I have to develop that keen discernment. I say this all the time. I, I, I want to heed the hunches of the Holy Spirit. When he nudges me, I don't, I, I don't want to override him because I'm so caught up in what I feel and how I see and, and what, what I'm thinking. I want that sensitivity to the presence of the Holy Spirit. And I tell you, I've, I've been sensing it in, in a greater way. I believe the fast has brought greater clarity. I believe just spending time in prayer. I get up and just get before the Lord every morning for several hours. And I tell you, there's been several times God's put someone on my heart or something on my heart. And when I've called or followed through, it's like, oh God, that was only you. That was only God, and I'm so grateful. I don't think I would have had that discernment and been able to hear that still, small voice if my flesh would be the one that I'm feeding. It is one thing to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. It's another to stay filled with the Holy Spirit. And in Ephesians 5, Tells you how to stay. God never tells you what to do without telling you how to do it. Amen. He says in verse 17 of Ephesians 5, Therefore do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. And do not be drunk with wine, but be filled 
with the Holy Spirit. That's the will of God, that we be filled with the Holy Spirit. How are you filled with the Holy Spirit? By speaking to yourselves, to one another in psalms, in hymns, and in spiritual songs. That's your prayer language. Paul said, I pray in tongues more than you all. Singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. I tell you this all the time. Don't let the devil steal your song. Because a singing Christian is a victorious Christian. Let's all stand up. We're going to invite our altar workers to make your way down. If you are here in the house, if you are watching, and you do not have a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, I want to give you an opportunity to invite Christ to come in. He goes where he's invited. And if you would just say, Lord, I, I confess my sins. We've all sinned. We've all fallen short. And I ask you to come into my heart. Be the Savior but be the Lord of my life. Fill me with the Holy Spirit, Lord. I want to be led by the Spirit. And if you pray that prayer for the first time or you're returning and recommitting your heart and life to Christ, I pray you sense a peace, a peace that only Christ can give you. All of you, lift your hands to the Lord. Just say, fill me afresh and anew with your Holy Spirit that I could be led by the Spirit of the Lord. Amen. All right, if you need prayer, make your way down. The cafe is open. The resource center is open. Tuesday night Bible study. Wednesday at the well. Friday is our Arise night of worship. Don't miss next Sunday. Invite somebody to come to church with you for our tabernacle celebration.